Hi, it's Mitch here from Bushlaw for Centurion again. Um, just quickly going to show you how to set up a rattle. It's going to be like a small handover type video or what we would cover in handover. Um, basically, the first thing we'd want to do is to level the caravan. So we'll take out our two jacks and level according to the width and the length of the caravan. Always keep the spare wheel as the low point, especially in the raining season. Uh, that must be your low point so that the water can flow off the roof uh, in a natural flow that way. We'll try and keep the awning side dry or the kitchen side living area dry as far as possible. While we go around the unit, Jack down here. This is your breather for your water tank. Okay, that needs to be open when you do anything with water. Filling water, using water in camp, uh, draining water when you head back home. Anything to do with water, that must be open. Okay, this is your filler. Okay, so all you do is just to screw it open. And basically, put your hose in there and fill it up. It will spill out the filler and the breather when the tank is full. Uh, on the rod, it takes 150 liters. Down at the bottom, just below here, there is a tap. I'm just going to open it quickly so you can see the water running out. That is for your basin inside. That's for the grey water that runs out the basin on the inside. Um, on the same side, below the bed, you've got your 220 inlet plug. So blue plug this side. Other side will be a three point. So just remember your three point adapter that goes into a caravan park plug. From there, we'll start with roof, front bed, side bed, awning. And then when we close, it will be reversed. It will be um, awning. Side bed, front bed, and then roof to complete the, the breakdown. While we're on this side, I can quickly show you guys the new geysers. Um, so on the Hansen geyser, this is your exhaust vent for the gas side. Before you start up your start up your geyser, always remember to bleed your geyser. So first thing would be to switch on the mains on the 12 volt side, switch on your pump, and then just run a bit of water through here till you get a constant flow of running through the geyser or through the hose. Then you know your geyser is full in water. Um, it's very important, especially on the 220 side, to make sure that the geyser is filled with water. Otherwise, you might burn out the element. Um, on the gas side, if the geyser is halfway full, it's okay. Try and fill it as far as possible and then start up the system. Okay, so from there, we'll go around and we'll start. All right. So first things first, to release the roof, you've got two clips on the front. The one there. On there, and then two clips on the rear. One here above the stair wheel, and then on the rattle, it's the only one that's uh, like a hidden clip here in the center of the roof. It just uh, realigns the roof when you close the roof. So it's clipping in there. I'm going to enter here from the shower side. Go right, up in. And push up on the roof. I usually use one of the ribs. Just push on the roof. Lift it up into position. Just going to switch on the lights. There we go. And then on the back end, same story. Push up on the wrap. And lock it into position. Make sure when you lock that one, the other one's also locked in position. Something to keep in mind, when you close your roof, always zip up your canvas windows so you don't have any tanks pinching on the outside. Okay, the rest all happens from the outside, so we're going to do that now. Then we move around the unit. You can still do the front end. Make sure your handbrake's push back. And your jockey wheel handle is always pushed back and off. Pull on the A-frame. As the bed falls down, slides past the handbrake. I use my back here as a support. Then you've got two hands where you can maneuver the eight frame and get your side tip into position. Then I'll quickly open the bed. Start with one side first. As you lift up, then clips into that ball socket down there. Same with the other side. So as you lift up, there's the ball socket that's in there. Then you just use the elastic band. If I can think when I'm the base. I'll show you on that corner now, there's like a clip. Very tight in the bed. So that goes around the back here. And then on the newer models, there's an additional clip where you can tighten the tent nice and tight. So that will hold the tent no wind getting in there.
Then we can do the side bed. So the side bed fly sheet is loose on all the models. So we start with this one here. Um, when you look at your fly sheet, you've got a, a roping and a piece that has no roping and then roping again. Same with the other side. So on the newer models, we're only sliding the center piece of the fly sheet. Slide it in, pull it all the way to where it gets close to where it needs to sit. Fold over the reflective sheet. Just put it on the roof. To open the bed. Right. As you lift up the tent, the legs on the bed will fold out into position, and same as the front bed, steps into position. Same with the elastic band, the tightens all the way around the base. And in the back corner again as well. We need to pull the fly seat, seat into position. On the shower side on the rifle, you've got two extrusions where it slides down. So we we'll start with the one closest to the tent. The one that's closer to the shower will be for the shower. So you would one this side. And then on the side of on the other side of the bed. Okay. Well, I think it's finished with the setup on the base. You need to put in the spring rods. They're all identical. So I'm just gonna put in one for the exercise so you guys can see. So you've got a, a bend in the straight part that bends down, and then you've got your hook. So the bend goes in first. Then down to make sure you put it nicely into the aluminium sleeve in there. You don't scratch your body, okay? Make sure you pull the tent a little bit, keep it away from your face. If it slides out of your hand, it doesn't need to in the face. Okay, that's it. So you'll do four spring rods on the side bed, five spring rods on the front bed. From there, you're just basically setting up the awning. So we start from the front, opening the rear. You'll see the first clip and the last clip holding the fold bag and the awning. The center clip is just holding the awning. So we'll start from one side to the other outer side. And then before you take your poles away, we'll put them on the floor. Get out one of the long poles. There's two of them, they're identical. So you can't mix them up. Just put it down on the floor, close by. Release the last clip. First rope, close on, so when we go back with. Okay, so just walk it out. Sorry, my space is a bit limited here, so just need to help it over the other awning here. Okay. If you know you're going to definitely be putting on your side panels, just clip it on loosely, okay? That is very important to make sure the sliding system on the awning can work so the whole canvas roof can move. So if we come this way, when you open the front arm, if I demonstrate up here, if you just grab it there, you can see the whole canvas can move, okay? That's very important so that the awning can move to the front and the canvas can tension to the front. So what you want to do is open your arm, then you've got a pull tab here at the top that you can pull on. So you just give it a pull. You want that seam to be very close to straight with this arm. If it's on top of the arm, it's fine. As close as possible to that arm. Okay. When we put in that long pole we took out. We always start in the front. Okay, these are telescopic poles, so you pull them tight, turn it, and then drop down your leg. If it's windy, make sure someone protects this corner so the wind doesn't catch you out. Okay, then we tension to the rear. So on the newer models, we have changed the system here a little bit. So we go around the far, furthest lip, around the next one, and you pull it as tight as you can to the roof. 
and upload nice and tight. All right. Then we set up the rest of the awning. So in doing that, we will add in all the poles. So let's quickly do that for you guys. Make sure you put your bag away so it doesn't blow away and get lost. And you're done. Okay, so when you're putting the awning poles, there's like a locating hole in the arm. So you see there, you've got like a spigot that goes in there. Some on both sides. So the first one is structural. The second one is not structural. It's purely there for support of the rain poles. And we'll get to them now. Okay. Come on, right up. So the square pole goes over the two poles. There's a speaker on one side and a round uh, speaker on the other side that fits into that ball socket. You've got one loose leg that will slide into that uh, eyelet down there. Then you've got three shorter poles and now in the rear. Okay. So one in the rear, and then as you go around, you'll just find the holes in the awning arms, and everywhere where there's a patch, that's where your rain falls will go. So in there, <clears throat> okay. Then we've got. Let me show you guys here. What we call the rain poles. So these help with tension on the awning and also stop the awning from pulling. So you've got four long ones, three short ones. So the rule of thumb, long poles with the long poles and the short poles with the short poles. Meaning the long poles will be in the front part of the awning and the shorter ones to the rear. You can see now the awning started to get nice tension on it, so that will stop it from pulling as far as possible. It is advisable also to adjust your levels on your legs to make sure you've got runoff off the awning. Um, so you don't have any, it mustn't be 100% level if that makes sense. And then your wind poles, they just give it a bit of an angle running off the roof. And there you go, that's the awning. So that's basically the setup on the rattle. I'll just quickly show you guys um, the mattresses inside, the easy way to get them in, or the way to know which way they need to be around um, so that they lay correctly. Okay, so let me switch off this light quickly. So on this bag, you've got a Velcro there, and there's a Velcro at the top there. So fold in your strap, fold over your bag. It just gives you a nice clean effect and also stops the zips from getting pinched in the doors. So I'm going to fold that back right there. Right. Okay. With regards to the mattresses, when you look at the mattress setup, you've got a thicker part and a thinner part. And then this is the front bed mattress. So if you look at the bed base going out, the outer base is lower than the inner base. So this will be your, your outer side. The fold goes over the fold in the middle, and then the, the shallow side or the thinner side will be this uh, inside base. So the easiest to get them in, what I found, to actually put it down on the floor, just get the top end part in, and then just push it in. There you go. Then the side bed mattress is the diff, it's uh, completely the other way around. So you've got a thicker part and a thinner part. Thicker part will be on the inside, sorry, inside, and the thicker, uh, thinner part on the outside. So you just get it lined up, sliding it. And that's basically set up. Then you'll just make your beds. And that's it. Alrighty, just quickly on the power system, um, all the units work roughly the same, actually, the identical, the same. Um, some of them just have a bit more lights, a bit more plugs, but uh, yeah, most of them are the same on the DV board. So to explain the DV board quickly for you guys, if you look nicely or carefully at the top, 220 and 12 volt. Okay, so this is your 220 side, meaning if you've got shore supply plugged in, 
you will have power on this plug and your exterior plugs. That will also switch on your charger, which will recharge your battery. Um, that also runs the geyser element. So very important, before this switch is switched on, you must bleed the geyser first. So to bleed the geyser, mains, water pump on, run the water through the geysers, shower hose, and make sure there's a constant flow. If there's a constant flow, we're happy, you can start up the geyser. Alrighty. So the 12 volt side, the mains controls basically everything from there. Mains, fridge, water pump, lights, external plugs, and solar. Um, if you don't have solar on the roof, there won't be a solar switch on there, but most of the new units do have solar on the roof. Okay. The 220 side, that indicates that you are connected to shore supply and there's power coming to the trailer. If that light's not working, there's a problem with the power supply. Could be your extension, it could be in the camp where you are. Uh, battery monitor up there, that's on Victron. Okay, so first time you push up or down or plus or minus, it will switch on the light and then it gives you a few different readings throughout the system um, that can help you with any detail that you would require. Below that, your water level indicator, the pump switch needs to be on. I'm just going to switch it on quickly. And then if you push it, it shows you the water level in the tank. As it goes down, I suggest to my clients, first indicator, if that goes blank, you've used one third, two thirds, a third left, and you're into reserve. So I won't go shower if it's on the second dot, um, just to make sure you don't run the geyser dry and burn out the element. You've got 12 volt halos up here. There's a bunch of them outside as well. And then you've got a USB up here. And with regards to the geyser, <coughs> very important, there's the, in, the the message for water tank of geyser before opening or switching on the power. So if you want to run it on 220, you need to bleed the geyser first, switch on that switch. And then basically it's between switching electric and gas. Okay. For now, I'm just going to switch it on. The geyser is switched off. So it should not do anything. So you'll see it's off. It stays off. Okay. If we do it on gas, Sorry, pump switch must be on. If we do it on gas, there's the electric side, but the geyser switch is off, so it can't switch on the element now. If we switch it off, switch it to gas, switch it back on again, the indicator will start to flicker. If it flickers slowly like it is now, then you know the geyser is trying to start up. It is a self-igniting system, so it will do everything it needs to do. If it does not ignite a few times, it will start to flicker very quickly. Then it tells you, listen, something is wrong, I'm not happy. When it goes constant, like it was on the 220 side, you know that the geyser is working 100% and everything is happy. Okay. If the light goes off on the geyser, you know the geyser is on temperature. And temperature on the geyser would be uh, between 65 and 70 degrees. And that's it on the power system. Now to close the warning on a rattle, uh, we're going to quickly break down the whole rattle. So we're going to just do it step, in, step by step. So first things first, we take out all the uprights or the rain poles. Make sure you put down all your wing poles or tensioner poles up here. Okay. Just in the excess wall, if you close it, all your kitchen tops and your doors, it makes it easier. Just start all the way. Make sure you release the bag on the Velcro at the top so it folds down. Then start from the back end to the front. So I'll start with this one here. Okay. So if you start with the back long pole first, leave the front one to last. Hold up all your legs. Okay. 
and we release the front on the second long pole. Okay. What you want to do is to take this arm underneath the canvas. So you want to lift up the okay? canvas, take the arm in underneath. Make sure on the inside that you fold the canvas over past the arm so that you have aluminium against aluminium and my material in between. Otherwise, it will create rubbing there. Okay, then we release the back end. Bring your rope on the lowest point of the wing, the canvas. Hold that up to your left hand. Slide along the triangle side. Then we roll up to the top. Start with the center strap first. The brain, don't pull hard on the strap as it is plastic. Lift up on the wing material, just tension up, don't pull hard. Okay, then you put all the balls back in the bag. The opening will be in the part of the least balls, that will go to the rear. The front end will be bottom of the bag that goes to the front. Okay. Pinch it up. Right. And then the back step. Let's start tension up. Okay. Now the leg. And that's up back to front. That's the wing. It will be the front bed and the side bed. So I will do wing first when we close, then front bed, then side bed. Then we drop down the roof so the roof face are last. Okay. When we open up, it's reversed. So we open up the roof first, open up the side bed, front bed, awning, and then basically we set up. So it's going to take out the bedding right there. So you just pull the bedding off. On both beds, okay. One bed, the easiest is to grab it on the seam that's furthest away from you. As you pull it, it will fold in. The side bed, just lift it up and it folds in. Okay. Put both mattresses on top of each other, or you can have them upright and strap them down. Okay. But this will happen from outside. Okay. So if I just pull the spring rods. Be careful when you remove them or when you fit them that you don't get hit in the face of them. You press slide out of your hand. Okay. You get your spring rod back. Or to release the tent from the base. Work it from one side to the other side. Okay, before you unclip the tent, push it back like an old horse cart. So it falls over. Okay, get one side of the tent frame into the body, fold in the arm. And then we do the other side. Well, pull it down, slide low, and push up as we go in on the front. Just make sure both legs are folded in nicely. 
But we don't have anything that's going to bend the panel if you maybe pinch it. Remove your safety clip. Push up on the A-frame. Push over. Remember to flip your side pitch right back into position. That's the front bit. We're going to go around to the side bit quickly. The front bit basically the same thing. You'll just unclip all your spring rods. Okay, so three of them that side, one on this side. Okay, we'll put them in the bag now. Pull out your pins on both sides. Okay, pull off the ply sheet. Just fold it up as neat as possible. And then same story as the front bed, start with all the clips releasing the bed panel or the tent in the bed panel. Then on the inside, you've got two legs. They just pull out of the ball socket, they swivel up to the center. So you pull both of them out, they swivel up to here, hold them with one hand, fold in the tent, and fold up the bed panel. Make sure that there's nothing protruding out. No tents, no nothing, and then also make sure if you feel any resistance that you don't force it, otherwise you might bend the bed panel. Okay, careful of your fingers, and that's the side bed. <clears throat> okay, so on the shower um, breakdown, so first things first, you'll clip out off the shower head, feed it back into position. Make sure as you go, close all the doors. So you don't have any issues of forgetting a door maybe. These poles, they are your wind poles just to stop the doors from sm smacking each other. They stay in the bottom of the door. Okay. This bag here is for all your side flaps. So they attach the shower basically to the unit. So it's all Velcro. Pull that out there. Okay, there you go, just pack them away so you don't lose something. There's your basket, the clothes at the bottom end of the shower. Same story as you go, just pack it away. Then behind the door, so there's another stopper pole on the door. Behind the door there's another Velcro that attaches the shower to the body. Slides out to the top. Okay. There's your shower bags. Put them by the geezer so you don't lose them and you know where they are. Okay. Next step would be taking out your uprights. I prefer to put them in the side pockets and um, then you know where they are. So up there. Okay. Next step will be taking down the legs. I just fold up to there. Same with the other one. So it folds in behind the door. Ideally, you would want the door closed as far as possible, but for the video purpose, it's open now. One thing to be very vigilant of when you close the, the whole uh, awning itself or the shower itself. One arm is very close to the profile of the box. The other arm is a little bit further. Um, I don't know if you can see with the light there. So what you want to do is the one closest to the box is one folding in first, okay? So I'm gonna ask you to just jump out quickly. Okay, so close the door. Get out your center pole. Don't put your center pole too far away. You're gonna use this as your rolling device to roll up the tire. So what you wanted to start with first is the arm that's closest to the box. Make sure you fold over the tank, same as the awning. So you don't have any material pinching. As you go, just make sure no material's in the way. And fold over. 
before you close it up completely, make sure all the clips are up. So you don't have a struggle with the clips. Okay. Then you go at the bottom on your pole. Start your own. I'll give you the ability to do this yourself, so you don't need any hands helping you. Just keep rolling. Same as the awning. Start in the center first. Make sure you don't, oh, you clip these um, tie downs up as well, so you don't pinch them in the zip perhaps. Clip on there. Same story as the wing, plastic clips, so don't pull too hard, just to get it nice and tight. Feed in all this, uh, uh, rest, the rest of the strap, so you don't pinch anything there. Okay, and then the last on this side. Ronnie, right, that's the shower. All right, so closing the roof. Um, you want to have all the windows closed for this purpose. We're just going to leave them open for now. We're just closing the roof. We're going to open just now again. So you want to grab the bar at the top. This is what they call the locking device. So that locks it in position. Okay. That makes sure the tent's nice and tight. The gas trucks are what are holding the roof. Okay. So pull down. Mm -hmm. As it pulls down, make sure you check that all the tent comes in on the inside. So you don't pinch anything tent on the outside. Okay. Start with the back end first. Then you go to the front end. Same story as you pull, make sure everything plugs in nice and neat. You don't pinch any tents. Okay. Pull down. Then you've got five clips on the rattle, on the bow bib, and the rest of them is less. So you've got two clips on the rear. Okay. Then you've got one hidden one in the center of the roof. That just helps to, to locate the roof nice and square. There we go. And then the front. Two. We do them last. They've got a nice pull handle, so if the tension on the rubber starts to pick up, then you can pull on it nice and tight. Great. We're quickly going to show you how to use the stabilizers or jacks. Um, they do actually both. So you can use them to stabilize and level the trailer, but you can use it to jack up the trailer and change the wheel as well. So they might be a bit short on the rattle and the bow web. Um, you might need to put something under the jack, uh, depending on the angle of the terrain you want. Uh, but you will be able to jack up and change the wheel and carry the weight of the trailer. Okay. So you take it down. So you just stack it in. Take out the base. The base that's inside that triangle there. So I put it in the wrong way. Slides in there. Into that bracket, and then you've got a locking fan. Keeps it in position. There we go.